coded. Puppy. I can imagine negatives as poles and positives as bumps. So there's Coda. And if you look very closely, she'll pop out just there. So there's Coda the puppy. She's in zero and she has dug ten holes. You can see the holes. And for every hole Coda dug, she has one bump. So separate or all together, all my bumps and holes give me zero. Now you can get the children to count this up and I'll say there are ten positives and there are ten negatives. And ten positives and ten negatives equals zero. So we start to have a very simple way of explaining integers with play. Okay, so negative three plus positive seven is hard for children to imagine. So we usually don't even try to start teaching negative numbers to little children. Yet three holes for negative three and seven bumps for positive seven is much more fun. Now I've just got a picture of a battery to help you remember. On a battery, negative is the back terminal and positive is the red terminal. You don't want to mix up positive and negative on a car battery. Okay, so here's part of the puppy. She's got seven bumps nicely stacked up and she's got three holes. So she's going to add those seven bumps with those three holes. So here she goes, she's got seven positives and three negatives. So there they are, frozen in time, let it rip photo, bang, down it goes, and that's the answer. So children will believe that story because they know it to be the truth of physics and quantity. And four bumps, or positive four. So negative three plus positive seven equals positive four. And you'll be able to have children probably in class two being able to do mathematical equations with positives and negatives using this approach to modeling based on the physical foundations of mathematics. So negative seven minus negative four. Now, if you have seven holes and four holes are taken away, you have three holes. How simple is that? Negative seven minus negative four, uh, negative 11 is it? Or plus 11? No, it's simple. If you've got seven holes and you take four holes away, you can have three holes left. So we've got a very simple way to have children get confident dealing with negative numbers and subtraction. So seven negatives minus four negatives is three negatives. So what about negative two multiplied by minus three? I'm going home. Okay, now, when I have negative, I use a superscript. I don't know if you've noticed that. When I mean minus, I have a standard case dash. Because that negative is an adjective that describes the quality of the unit. So that the superscript is an adjective and the minus is a verb. So negative one into negative one equals positive one. And the demonstration goes like this. Bang. There you go. That's the sort of thing mathematics teachers will give children to prove that negative 1 to negative 1 equals positive 1. And that's very difficult to write down. I know because I wrote that and I had that published in a mathematics magazine. So, yeah, I was like, is it the associative, distributive, and, uh, but, you know, it's true, it's correct. That's how you prove negative 1 into negative 1 equals positive 1. But what if you could have children aged 10, maybe in class 3 perhaps, or class 4? What if they could explain why negative into negative is positive and know for a fact it must be so? Okay, at the moment, people do not understand how to interpret multiplication. Because we have drifted away from Indian mathematics. Negative A into negative B, actually 
actually means, if you want to understand it, negative A subtracted from zero B times. That's what it actually means. When you have a negative in front of the multiplier, it means repeated subtraction from zero. So negative one into negative one simply means negative one subtracted from zero one time. So that's what we would start to talk to children about. What happens if we subtract negative one from zero? What might the answer be? So, Brahmagupta defines zero in what I call addition law number four. And I have a, a completely separate presentation uh, that's available for download that goes into all 18 laws of Brahmagupta. But I'm, I, this is a different talk to what I'm saying in my letter. So, Brahmagupta defines zero as when positive and negative are equal, the sign is zero. So, let's look at negative one into negative one which means negative one subtracted from zero one time. This, in our model, is zero. There are, there are infinite ways that we could define zero. We could have a billion positives and we could have a billion negatives, and that would still be zero. But in this, we've got positive one and negative one. This is an instantiation of zero. So if we subtract negative one from zero, Let's do it. We're going to prove it equals positive 1. So let's take away negative 1. And we've just proven that negative 1 into negative 1 equals 1 positive or positive 1 based on the true definition of 0. So therefore, negative 1 into negative 1 equals positive 1. And that's a lot simpler than the proof that I came up with. Um, okay. So, let's look at positive 2 into minus 3. Even the way I'm talking is different. We're no longer saying positive 2 into, uh, sorry, uh, positive into negative. We're saying positive into minus. So here we've got 10 positives and we've got 10 negatives. Together, positive 10 and negative 10 sum to zero. So this here is an instantiation of zero. So this is what we're going to start with. Like, this is like ground level zero, but maybe for children one or two years later. Minus three means positive two subtracted from zero three times. So we've subtracted positive two here, we've subtracted two positives there, and we've subtracted two positives there. So now, we'll cancel out positive two and negative two. We cancel those. We cancel out these because together they sum to zero. And that's what we're left with. Once we've taken away two positives three times, we're left with six negatives or negative six. Just by understanding how to think about multiplication with a negative multiplier being repeated subtraction of the multiplication from zero. So positive two into minus three equals negative six. So we'll do the, the trickier one, or what we think is trickier, negative two into minus three. And this is, we teach children the laws of sign, but they obey the laws of sign, but they don't really understand deeply the laws of sign. We just say them and memorize the rule. But negative two into minus three means negative two subtracted from zero three times. So we've subtracted two negatives or negative two there, we've subtracted negative two there, we've subtracted negative two there. Now we're going to cancel those out because they're equal and opposite, so they sum to zero, so they leave. So negative two into minus three gives us six positives or positive six. So negative 2 into minus 3 equals 